Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So I couldn't kick off the holiday season without having Father Christmas himself. <laughs> here on the channel, he's back again. <laughs> well, you know, I'm happy to be here because last year we were distanced. I... And although it worked out fine, thanks to your technical expertise. <laughs> Hi, Dad. Hello and Merry Christmas to everyone. Uh, it's so much better being It surely is, here. it surely so. is. If you missed last year's episode, I will link to it below. It's kind of hilarious. I had to patch him in from his house with my house. Technically, I guess it worked, um, yeah. but certainly this is much more fun. Much better. <laughs> so for this year's recipe, I had to turn to the family recipe box. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. Because this is a treasure trove in our family. Now, this is a very special box because it was given to my mother as a bridal shower present? No, it was given as a Christmas present by oh, your by your cousin. Oh, okay. Paula. And what I love about it is that it has all of these handwritten recipes in it, and she actually, as part of the gift, gave some of the family, the Ruggiero yes, family yeah. recipes. In I think her this is, writing. In her is writing. So I know. Wait, let me see. Oh, yeah. Here's one. Let's Those see. are about 50 years old. I yeah. know. These mm -hmm. are real vintage. Yeah. So it's veal scallopini, <laughs> which obviously must have been a very popular oh, dish yes. in your house. But what I think is very fun about this box is all of the different things that you sort of stuck into it. Well, <laughs> let me explain something to you. We were not as organized as you are. God bless you, but... Yes, the digital uh, age helps with right. that. <laughs> but what we would do is you see, you know, if I were commuting on the train, I would cut out something, because I used to commute from Westport to New York City. Yes. I would see something that I liked and, you know, I would yes. put it in Okay, there. and let's just and see what this was, because <laughs> this is the hilarious part. You would be clipping out, yeah, ragu alla bolognese, okay? But that has like 16 different ingredients and right. like simmers for three hours. Yeah. And so I always have to laugh, given the fact that there are no uh, tomato stains or any spots no. on this. I'm curious <laughs> if this was ever made. But no, wait <laughs> I think a my mom was like... Then if we went to a dinner party, uh, then we would say, oh, gee, this is delicious. And then we had a next door neighbor who was Swiss. And she really did some wonderful things. And she would write okay. out the menus and we would accept them, but never cook them because she was such an excellent cook. <laughs> we would just look at the recipes and say, oh, isn't this great? Yeah. But, you know, the, but those recipes are in there and she was the sweetest lady. And we really appreciate having those. Well, it really is a treasure trove because one of the things that I love about recipe boxes that we've really sort of lost in today's digital age, and I know I'm contributing to that, <laughs> is the fact that you see what really mattered to you at the time, at that you time, know, and yeah. what was in vogue. And the recipe that always caught my eye in this box was this recipe that comes from my Aunt Mellory. And I think what's really cute about it is just the little picture on the top. It's yeah. this little seal that says, kissing wears out, but cooking don't. <laughs> So I tried this last night before you came, huh? just to make sure it was good, and it is delicious. Oh, goody. <laughs> so the first okay. thing we're going to do is get Careful. a double boiler going. Now, this is sort of my jerry-rigged double boiler. I think back then there was a lot of recipes that began with double boiling. Yeah. We don't really do it that. fit inside. Yeah. The funny thing is we don't really do that much now. I think because all of these cooktops have such low BTUs, you can really simmer. Maybe. But I didn't want to take a chance. I wanted to okay. do it exactly how she instructed. So you're going to add a half a cup of butter. And mm -hmm. I would recommend unsalted butter because the cheddar cheese that's going to go in soon is really salty. So if you use salted butter plus the saltiness of the cheese, it ends up being a little too salty. And then you're going to add the cream cheese. So I have half a cup of just plain whipped cream cheese and a cup and a half of sharp cheddar cheese. If you get the sharp cheddar, you're just going to get a lot more flavor to it. So do look for the sharp. Now, don't let the butter melt too much before you put the rest of the ingredients in. Otherwise, the cheese sauce will separate and that butter will be very difficult to reincorporate it into the cheese. And then basically what it's gonna look like is this really beautiful velvety cheese sauce. While you're doing that, I'm gonna cut the bread. So I'm using just a loaf of French bread. And one of the things to keep in mind is that the best kind of bread for this are those sort of soft and squishy French loaves that you can get at the grocery store. In fact, the squishier, the better, um, because it's what's going to make these cheese puffs really light and pillowy. The other thing I learned from my test run last night mm -hmm. is that I think if you can get the cubes to be roughly the same size, which might involve cutting off some of the crust, um, just so you have a plain bread cube, they'll be more uniform in nature, which I think helps them all cook at the same rate. Okay. Leave it to you. Yes, I know, right. Talk about precise, but I'm telling you, I had to laugh reading this recipe because it, it then said things like chill, but like it didn't say for how long. And no, wait a minute. I know I, what they meant. See, today it would probably be more appropriate. 
chill. Yeah, I know, right? No, but like if it was today, if I was writing it, it would be chill for 15 <laughs> minutes and make sure you use parchment paper. Like, right. I think we give so many details now. Absolutely. Which I think is interesting. Like, I just wonder back then, did they just know these details? Like, no. was that not necessary? I think they did in a lot of ways, you yeah. know? And especially if a friend gave it to you or a relative get it, gave it to you, you would know. Yeah, they would they maybe meant. talk about yeah, it, yeah. Exactly. But I always laugh. Some of the recipes in that box, they just have the ingredients. Oh There's not God. even a method. You're just supposed to figure it out. They were great cooks. <laughs> I guess Your so. forefathers and mothers. Good. Now, when do I put the oh, egg yes. whites? No, you, I know, you're very eager yeah. with those egg whites. Right. But sweetheart, we have to whip, <laughs> whip them first. So we're not gonna put oh, the egg gosh. whites in here. You have to actually whip oh. them so that they're nice and stiff. And then oh. what that's gonna do is lighten. See, oh, look at okay. this cheese sauce. This is a very heavy cheese sauce that you want to lighten with the egg whites. So oh, okay. we're gonna do that next. I have two egg whites here that I am going to just put into a large bowl. And then you want to beat them until they're nice and stiff. Mm -hmm. All right, so here we go. This is a great mixer. Yeah. Like hardly any time. It is, yeah. <laughs> All right, then I'm gonna take these lovely whipped egg whites mm -hmm. and fold them into this cheese sauce. Anytime you're trying to fold in light egg whites to a very dense, heavy ingredient, you have to do it a little bit at a time. And then just easy does it. Um, and it's not going to incorporate on your first try. You just have to do little by little, but it will eventually fold in and become a nice, light, fluffy mixture, which is what we are okay. looking for. Right. This looks delicious. Yeah, it does. I mean, we actually haven't even gotten to the hardest part. <laughs> Huh? <laughs> this is not the hard part. It's not hard, it's just tedious. Basically, we're gonna have to dip these little fragile yeah. bread cubes into this. Yeah. So the lighter the mixture is, the easier they are to dip. Yeah. Now one little trick, because this pan that we did the cheese sauce in is pretty mm -hmm. sticky, I use my water from the double boiler to pour it in there. Oh. And then it soaks it and That's because it's so hot. That's a great idea. <laughs> right, so don't throw it away. Now, as I mentioned, this is a little bit of the tedious part, but yeah. I tried a skewer, I tried a toothpick, I tried spoons. Really, the best way is two forks, okay. I think. So. And Aunt Mallory didn't mention her? No, of oh. course not. <laughs> Aunt Mallory, okay. there's no details. This so will I be just, fun. Yeah, let's here, go. Wait, you go. do the first. All right, well, yeah, let's see. You pierce your cube with your fork, right? And then you dip it in and see, it's a very thick batter. So I actually thought it was easier to yeah. sort of coat it, coat and roll, right? It's almost like fondue. You want it to be more liquidy, but I was afraid to add anything else to it because once they're baked, it comes right. on. So oh, I don't okay. think, the only thing maybe you could do is add like another egg white that might make it even lighter, but I don't know. The flavor is so good. I didn't want to mess with it. See? I'm sure Aunt Mallory will tell us. I know. Aunt Mallory, if you're <laughs> watching, you need to email me and tell me what She's is not the shy. story. No. <laughs> I would recommend putting this on a parchment-lined baking sheet um, because they do get a little brown on the bottom, but with the parchment paper, it prevents it from sticking oh. and burning. And then the funny part is, is the way she said it in the instructions, it's, oh, just dip the bread cubes in the cheese mixture. <laughs> There's no dipping. It's like a rolling pasty thing. Are you sure you didn't forget yeah. something? <laughs> didn't. This is what it said. I tell you, you're going to be rewarded once you see them baked. They're really delicious. Um, and you can get this all done ahead of time. So if you're looking at this process thinking, there's no way I'm going to go through all this <laughs> with the kids screaming and everything else going on, you do this at a quiet moment when no one's around. And yeah. then you pop them in the fridge or the freezer and then they're all done. Why don't you do the paprika and I'll do the chives. Just a sprinkling of the paprika. I'm using smoked paprika because I think that adds a nice smokiness mm. against the cheddar cheese. Um, and then I'm going to just follow you with a little bit of chives, which I also think is a great flavor. And then you have that sort of Christmassy green and red thing going ah, on. Yeah, I didn't think of that. Which is good. Mm -hmm. See, so you could have this whole tray in your fridge ready to go. And then like moments before the guests are due to arrive, pop them in the oven. And then when they come, there's nothing better than greeting somebody with a warm hors d'oeuvre, right? And right. a glass of bubbly. Well, I don't, rem I don't know why, but I remember her putting them in plastic bags yes. in the freezer. So she, okay, so that is another instruction yeah. which you can do. You can take this whole thing and put it in the freezer, and then once they get hard, right. then you could put them all in a big Ziploc bag and then just put them right in the oven. No need to thaw. So I might try that. Great idea. <laughs> all right, 400 degrees Fahrenheit for just 13 minutes. Oh, here they are. It was worth all that snowballing. And... <laughs> Wasn't it? Now, while these were in the oven, we did have a chance to call Aunt Mallory to just put to rest whether or not we were missing an ingredient because that batter was so thick. And she said what? She said that it is a little tedious, you know, doing the snowballing, but that the proof is, is in, in the, the pudding. pudding. <laughs> 
The but proof we, is in the hors d'oeuvre. The proof okay, is in the hors Can we try yes, one? Yes, but wait. But first, we have to give a serving tip because I really liked oh, your yeah. handiwork with these doilies. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so doilies always remind me of like <laughs> vintage cocktail parties. I don't know why. But I wanted to use a doily because they get a little greasy and yeah. you didn't want to put it, you know, on your Your grandmothers love those. Oh, yeah. did they? Yeah. You know, they come in all different sizes, but if you can't get the size that you want, like these are eight inches and my little platter here is not that big, you can actually cut them. So my dad actually did this handiwork. He did a very good job, I must say. So see, this is just going to fit right into our little serving tray. Which was your grandmother's. Oh, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> All in the family. So mm. Mm. These are really good. They are so good. Mm. Here, they're really mm. good washed down with a little. Oh, yes. Bubbly. Chin chin. Merry Christmas. Oh, these are so good. Isn't it a great combo? Now wait, we have a special guest off camera beckoning for a taste. Mm. But the only way we're going to give her one is if she comes on. Mom! <laughs> and here she comes. And here she comes. Where is the drum roll? <laughs> I know, right? This shot, I know I'm going to bite. <laughs> oh mm. Aren't those good? Delicious. These are the same. These are what I thought they were. You remember mm. them from back in the yes. day? Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, you, no, you really you can't just eat just one. one. Chin hey. chin. Merry Christmas. Stay safe. I'm so glad we got to do this in person. Delicious. <laughs> mm -hmm.